He fulfilled his childhood dreams by becoming a world-class dancer, but he pushed himself too far. At one point in my career, I thought the more pain I could take, the better dancer I would be. When his hips gave out, his days of dancing seemed to be over. But could cutting-edge surgery give him a second chance? These are operations that technically are much more difficult than conventional replacements. For years. Sarah James on a dancer, a doctor, and a dream. William Starrett is addicted to dance. He spends nearly every waking moment directing, choreographing, or rehearsing a ballet. It's amazing. To me, it's like a beam of light comes around me, and from the wing to the hitting the stage, it's like another planet. But those are memories of a former life. Ankles, point. Today, this award-winning dancer lives in a sort of ballet purgatory. He can no longer dance, yet he spends hours coaxing improvement from those who can. The extreme measures he'll take to dance again are a testament to how determination and medical science can forge a miracle. Did you know from childhood that you wanted to be a dancer? Yes. I started dancing when I was five, and I started with tap, actually. And my sister and I were a little team, and we performed at pool parties and PTA meetings. <laughs> As William grew, so did his ambition. He became obsessed with joining a prestigious national company. His only goal? To be the prince in the most famous ballets. I had this burning passion. I just, I wanted to do it so badly. I can't explain it. His passion was fueled by an extraordinary ability to leap. I was especially known for my flexibility. I could lift my legs higher, and then you had this unusual line of being flexible, so I could go beyond a split. But William was unaware that the very moves that brought him success were already sabotaging his career. At one point in my career, I thought the more pain I could take, the better dancer I would be, which is silly, because pain is a warning. It was a warning William chose to ignore as he won featured roles around the world. I was insanely, detrimentally ambitious. All I want is everything. That ambition led to the perfect job for a man obsessed with ballet when William became the director of a ballet company. I want you to work on that. Now he could do it all, choreograph, direct, and star in any ballet he wanted. But all that was about to end. I was losing flexibility and I couldn't figure out why. And it would be painful and I couldn't do certain positions. It took a year for William to learn what was wrong. Hips have a spongy smooth lining called cartilage that prevents bones from scraping together. Hold your breath for me. William's x-ray showed he had little cartilage left. His relentless dance schedule was wearing it away. In this particular area, which is the weight-bearing area, it's bone on bone. Doctors would later calculate that every leap William landed slammed his hips with a pressure equal to 10 times his body weight. But despite the diagnosis, William continued to perform. Even though he no longer danced, the pain got worse. Is just this amount of movement painful for you? I feel it. Um, By the time Dateline first met William last year, he had virtually no cartilage left in his hips. In fact, every step he took was bone scraping against bone. The same man who used to leap across stages around the world was now struggling to put on his socks and using his hands to lift his legs into the car. doctors offered William hip replacement surgery to reduce his severe pain, but each time he refused. Even the best device available would still limit the range of motion of each leg, and that was a problem because William wanted more than pain relief. He wanted to be back here, on stage, dancing again. Yet time was running out. 
At 43, William was beyond the age when most dancers retire, even if they aren't injured. But William was determined to find a way. Just to know that I could do it again, just one solo, just two minutes would be worth it. But last year, after four seasons behind the scenes, William learned that a new invention might give him a second chance to perform. The inventor is orthopedic surgeon Harlan Amstutz, the doctor who, 30 years ago, performed the first hip replacement ever done in the United States. And then reaming. This now standard surgery amputates the hip ball and substitutes a metal stem. It's a stable device. Amstutz believes Basically, his new device will last like three normal. times longer because the hip ball is not amputated. Instead, it's capped with a metal dome anchored by a small pin. The ball then fits into a metal socket, which replaces the protective cartilage Williams Dancing has worn away. It was like a miracle. It was like everything I'd hoped for. It's very stiff. While Dr. Amstutz was confident his new implant could eliminate virtually all of the pain, he couldn't promise William's return to the leaps and spins of his former career. How realistic are his hopes? Well, uh, when you're charting new waters, so to speak, uh, we don't have 100 dancers. Well, we actually don't have one at his level. All right? Are we all set? All right? So in one marathon operation, William will get two new hips and one more chance to dance again. And these are operations that technically are much more difficult than conventional replacements. After five hours of surgery, William has a near perfect set of hips, but no way of knowing if they can support rigorous dancing. So I guess no wheelies? No, no, no. no. <laughs> A week after surgery, William arrives home in South Carolina, ready to find out. Old external rotation. As predicted, William's hips no longer hurt, but the surgery didn't restore his strength or flexibility. They come back hard or easy. It takes weeks of grueling physical therapy to see even glimpses of his former skills. Months later, William has made enough progress that his therapist finally declares him back to normal. Very nice. But he's not yet back to this kind of normal, or the standards of a dancer in a starring role. I feel like I'm an inch off the ground. Clear. Clear. So he became his own drill sergeant, putting himself through an eight-hour-a-day regimen in the studio and a gym. Just doesn't feel... I doubled the classes, and then I would go to the pool every day and do more exercises. I just try to relax and get closer and closer. William knew he wasn't ready to dance in public, yet he shocked his staff by announcing he would return to the stage in barely six weeks. There. This tells me I'm going to be able to do it, I think. But William's own doctors don't even know if the hips have completely healed. They warn him that he may not be ready for the difficult dancing he'll do in the next two hours. And they're worried that my femur isn't quite strong enough and that it could possibly break. But worries and warnings won't stop William from risking the long shot he's dreamed of for so long. This has been advertised as his comeback performance. The entire audience knows that William will be attempting what many think is impossible. So far, so good. But it's not over yet. Next, a series of non-stop pirouettes and jumps. And immediately after this, those scary lifts his partner was worried about. William admits it's not a flawless performance, but no less astonishing for a man who'd spent years believing he would never again feel the spell of the spotlight. You got a second chance at Happily Ever After. You're right. It's like another life.